What's up guys? This is the final bare bones planetary description video. This is my favorite planet, Saturn. Saturn's a piece of shit, just as a fair warning. He's not, he's not the great teacher. No, he's a piece of shit and you should be afraid of him. You should. I'm not saying I'm special because I like him. I'm just, I'm stupid. He's anciently known as Kronos and Kronos is good enough. His name is derived from the term sower, like a like you sow seeds, like a farmer does. And interestingly enough, his glyph represents a scythe, and it also, he uses one. I mean, he's represented with one. If you see pictures of Saturn, he's gonna have a scythe, or like an hourglass or a watch or something. Because he's super slow and he rules time. He rules Capricorn and Aquarius. Aquarius is his masculine sign, and Capricorn is his feminine sign. He's exalted in Libra, because at the time of Libra is coming around where the sun is, it starts to get cooler. And I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos, but around this time, the balance shifts more towards Saturn, who rules the cold the dryness of the dark abyss. He falls in Aries because of the literal exact opposite. Aries is the time when the sun comes in and it signifies spring coming through. Saturn weakens and he literally is like, oh, I can't stand the light, and he shies away. He doesn't have much power in Aries, but he has a ton of power in Libra. He rules the air triplicity by day. For the fourth time, we will go over triplicities at a different date once we are a little bit more established. Saturn is masculine, diurnal, cold and dry, melancholic, earthly, malevolent, the greater in fortune, and the author of solitariness. No matter what anyone says about Saturn being the great teacher, and I can't stress this enough, Saturn is truly a piece of shit and will delight at every chance to cause you grief, misery, and toil. That's just how it is. The reason for this is, like Mars is the lesser malefic, Saturn is the greater malefic. Positioned as far away in the classical solar system, we do not include the outer planets. I don't want to hear any ifs, buts, or kicking and screaming. Saturn is the outer limits. That's as far as we get to go as humans. End of story, the end, goodbye. Saturn is positioned as far away from the sun's light and energy and growth as possible. He is the, the farthest that we get to know. Past that is the aether and beyond of the fixed stars that, I mean, you can learn about and I think they're cool. I don't know very much about them. I just like to focus on the seven planets. Maybe one day I'll learn about the fixed stars. Regulus and Spica are cool. And I guess Sirius too, and uh, Antares, but only if you have a... Anyway, they're far more abstract than all the other planets. Going back to what I was saying about Saturn being a piece of shit. Saturn is cold and dry and melancholic. I guess it should be a good time to talk about the temperance now. I'll only go over them very briefly. So the temperance, the temperaments are sanguine, which is the airy temperament, choleric, which is the fiery temperament, melancholic, which is the earthly temperament, and phlegm, which is the watery temperament. Sanguine is hot and moist, choleric is hot and dry, melancholy is cold and dry, and phlegm is cold and moist. The reason why Saturn is so evil and has such bad energies is, in a disclaimer, if you get a really strong Saturn, you're, you're set. Like, you're really, really, he symbolizes, like, royalty, and if you get a good Saturn. If not, well, whatever. But watch out for him, seriously. Anyway, the idea in ancient alchemy is hot and moist or sanguine or air that's the those are the two components hot and wet that promote growth on the opposite end of the spectrum coldness and dryness are the things that hinder growth oh my my garden it's ruined well why jim because i'm not watering it and it's zero degrees out oh don't worry your Saturn plants will really like that. 
the idea <laughs> the idea is things realistically are not able to grow whether human or animal or plant or what have you in cold and dry at the same time areas whereas in the in the middle of summer when it's warm and wet and everything's growing and blooming in a hot and moist time it should speak for itself do things grow in the winter before you get all pedantic on me i'm sure that things do grow in the winter but as a rule everything shrivels up because it's cold and dry that's what saturn rules just to give you a fun little idea things that saturn rules people signified husbandmen clowns beggars day laborers old men fathers grandfathers monks jesuits couriers night farmers miners potters plumbers bearers of dead corpses fun scavengers carters gardeners ditchers chandlers dyers of black cloth and shepherds and the jews i'm not saying that to be an asshole he literally rules the jews anatomy and illnesses all impediments in the right ear teeth all hmm, all quartan agues i'm sorry i don't know what quartan agues are proceeding of cold dry and melancholy distempers leprosies rheums r h e u m s not r o o m s consumptions black jaundice palsies tremblings vain fears fantasies the hand and foot gout dog hunger too much flux of hemorrhoids well, ruptures if in scorpio or leo in any ill aspect with venus rules the spleen so just for you merry friends out there who always talk about oh my saturn is in leo i must be this this is my personality it's not just your personality you can get fucking hemorrhoids if you have planted in a certain spot as it literally just said right here if you were like source it literally represents ruptures if in scorpio or leo in any ill aspect with venus i don't have to say any more this rules everything guys a lot and to be honest i think most of us including myself are just too stupid to get it cuz it takes a long long time to understand which is why i'm trying to water it down in easy digestible videos for you a not very simple task i will tell you but i try and make it as entertaining as i possibly can colors and savors poop literally sour bitter sharp flavors dark sad ashy colors black um just i'm i have something to say but i'm just going to do a little bit more ah places that saturn rules deserts woods obscure valleys caves dens holes mountains or where men have been buried churchyards ruinous buildings coal mines sinks dirty or stinking muddy places wells and houses of offices cool places deserts woods oh wait i already said that didn't i my bad minerals and stones lead the lead stone the dross of all metals also the dust and rubbish of everything oh well there's just dust saturn stones sapphire lapis lazuli all black ugly country stones not polishable and of a sad ashy or black color i don't know. I, like it says lapis lazuli for saturn but i've read in other places that lapis is also ruled by jupiter so i don't know some of these things kind of cross physical descriptions offered generally the body is cold and dry of a middle stature the complexion pale or muddy his eyes small and dark looking downward a broad forehead black or sad hair and it's hard and rugged stuff like that basically old skinny gut probably strong still maybe hairy manners when well dignified i like this profound in imagination severe in his acts in words reserved in speaking and giving very spare in labor patient in arguing or disputing grave in obtaining the goods of this life studious and solicitous in all manners of actions serious manners when badly placed then he is envious covetous jealous and mistrustful timorous sordid outwardly dissembling sluggish suspicious 
a stubborn, a condemner of women, a close liar, malicious, murmuring, never contented, ever repining. I will be honest, sometimes I can be a bit of both of those. But I think the idea of Saturn is, if you ever seen like the Disney movie A Christmas Carol with the third spirit, he says nothing and he has a sight. It's death. Saturn represents fucking death. That's why sometimes he looks like a skeleton. Um, when and if I actually do make a Saturn talisman, which I'm pretty scared to do because after reading a lot of this stuff, you don't want to mess with Saturn if you don't have to. I want to because he rules my ascendant and he's me. And he's really well placed minus being retrograde. And, uh, oh, also, he co-rules magic with, with Mercury. So as shitty and stupid and boring as Saturn sounds, uh, he has profound powers. And uh, you don't want to mess with him. But uh, what I want to do, and this is probably not going to happen for another four years, um, I'm going to just get ash and rub it on my face, probably wear a black loincloth and a black robe um, with a whole bunch of black stuff playing really creepy music and um, three candles some aquamarine because they're aquamarine and ugly colors and um i'll have lead and and some other stuff um I'll probably burn poop i don't know I, literally i don't know but this if you want to work with the spirits in that way i recommend you do it in such a way where they are finding that you are focusing on things that they rule over saturn rules the color black and I probably said that, but I can't remember reading it. It's my favorite planet because I think if you get a good Saturn, you have your work cut out for you. But if he's in, like, the 12th house, you're in big trouble. Especially if he's in, like, Cancer or something. <sighs> um, and that's, that's entirely possible that you watching this could be in that. Um, but like I said, nobody gets everything. Please don't kick and scream. I've done enough of that for all of us, so there's no real need to. Nobody gets everything. And then, some of you may be asking, after I've finished with this, why is this the way that it works? Why is it this way? Um, I've talked with my friend about this for a long time, and um, the answer that we come up with is, why not? That's just how it is, guys. You won't find this kind of information. I mean, sure, there are people that are reading books and whatnot, and they write things to you. Um, but I try and make this a very unique, you know, channel. And um, I do it because I'm proud of the stuff that I read about. I think that a lot of the people that are dead, gone, and turned to dust and only barely forgotten memories, they learn something about the world that we don't hear about anymore. You don't hear about real magic. You don't hear about how real astrology is. All you hear is idiots and stupid people like astrology. And that may very well be true. It may. But after you read a lot of the stuff that I've been demonstrating to you, you have to, hell, you can't help but think, is there more to it? And um, I'll answer that question for you. Yes, there's a lot more to it. This is literally, this is like learning how to read in the grand scheme of things. You have to learn what the symbols mean, where they mean them, and in what quality. If you can't do that, you can't understand how the planets are interacting. And remember guys, the planets are the main players, not the signs. If you guys just ignore the planets, don't even bother with astrology. I'm serious, because you're not going to gain anything from it. I, I know that sounds really grave, but it's just not going to help you to focus on the signs. Think of it like the signs are a stadium for baseball, and the planets are the players. Do you look at the stadium itself, or do you look at the players doing things? It makes sense the more you look into it. And if you want, I can offer some more suggestions and reading material. I haven't done that because I just wanted to pound these out. And remember, these are super, super bare bone videos. You can find this information on Skyscript easily, but I wanted to make it easily accessible for you so you don't have to read it because I'm literally reading to you, 
and that's probably what I'm going to be doing for a lot of my other videos. Now that we've covered all of the seven planets, not thoroughly, mind you, but basics, good enough for now. I'm going to go into the houses, I think, not all of them at once. I would say three of them at a time, just to make it a little bit easier. Or maybe I'll separate them out from Angular, Succeedant, and Cadent, which I think makes the most sense. And then after that, um, well, crap, I have to figure that out. I should probably go over Sect, Above the Earth, Under the Earth, um, maybe Fixed Stars, and The Angles, which will probably be covered in the houses. Anyway... This covers it for the planets, guys. Um, I pounded these out because I just wanted to, and I'll probably pop them up. I mean, this is the last planet one, so um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to make videos covering other parts that I most likely have not covered because there's tons of stuff I haven't gone over. But anyway, this is Saturn, and this concludes the seven planets for now. Hope you enjoyed.